welcome here at Prop Coach. Uh, Coach Taco coming to you with a great session here today where we're going to talk about team versus solo. What works for you in the business? We see a lot of new teams, new team structures coming up, but we see also many agents that say, nah, I'm not gonna start a team and I don't even wanna join a team, I wanna do everything solo. And the question is, of course, what works better? What does better? How does it work? We're gonna do a whole check and balance explaining to you everything about the differences with a team in real estate or being solo in real estate. So I have it here all on the board. We're gonna get right started, so let's go. Oh, wait, hey. Have you subscribed already? Because I want to team up with you in being your mentor, your coach in the real estate. And I can do that the best possible way if you just subscribe and ping and just uh, watch my video every single week. Super happy. And if you have any questions on a next topic for a video, you can just send it in to us and I'm super happy to make that video. Okay, shall we get started? Yes, no, yes. Oh, let's say yes. Let's go at three, at two, at one and go. I'm actually so happy that we're talking about this topic today because these days we get a lot of questions about leadership. We get a lot of questions from, you know, agents in the market that are asking, hey, should I just, you know, do this business by myself or should I join a team? Or maybe even better, should I start a team? You know, there's so many options these days in real estate and so many people that are shouting out there like, hey, you should start a team. You should never start a team. You should join a team. You should never join a team. So, you know, let's just put everything into a check and balance today and see what are the opportunities out there, right? Because again, there's no such thing as a good or a bad. There's just what is useful for you. And of course, what is not useful for you. And as we are working with Prop Coach with many agencies, many leaders, and also many solo agents the question would be what makes sense for you and before we go and look a little bit at the different team structures because that is also a little bit what you want to know right what is the trend of the types of teams that are out there right we identify three types of teams that we would like to share with you today but before we go there let's go a little bit into the pros and the cons of why you should join the team or not join a team, right? Because again, is it useful for you? Is it not useful for you? That really depends on a lot of things based on your preference, your current situation, your market, etc. So let's look at team, right? What kind of pros does it have, right? I wanna just start with one very simple pro that is important for you to understand is in a team, there's such thing as a culture that you join, right? And you might say, oh, there's all this talk about culture and, and, and you know, I, I know already, but what does it have to do with my business? Now, listen, you know, once you join a business and you join a company, there is always an existing culture there, right? It's kind of like the company or the team explaining you, this is how we do things. This is how we treat people. This is how we move every day and feel that that is the right way of moving forward. So when you join a team and you look at the culture, there's already a significant difference in how that empowers you as an agent to build your business forward. If you jump into a team that has a culture of teamwork, intelligence, integrity and a very empowered way of helping you grow your business of course this is something that you cannot do by yourself if you you need a team for that that can support you like that you need people around you and you know what they usually say right uh, you are the average of the five people closest to you right but if you don't have those five people closest to you of course that you're all by yourself so culture I do see as a significant pro for many agents that once they join a team once they're part of a team structure and they have an empowered culture that will always benefit you in your business, not only in your deals, but also in how you personally will grow and how you will establish your business within the real estate. Another very significant pro is of course, very simple, you have a lot of collaboration opportunities, right? So of course it brings a certain collaboration opportunity between the agents within the team, right? As a team, you're always stronger than the solo agent 
in the same market in the same area so you might say yeah of course i can collaborate with many other agents i can collaborate with anybody that is true but if you are targeting a very specific region or a specific area what we call the geographical target area and that area you penetrate that with a team rather than somebody that is solo who do you think will win of course the team structure is always stronger because you can just leverage on each other you can work closer together and you can make sure that you serve clients at the the highest level and we see in the market that teams definitely make more sense when you're very focused in an area and work together to make those deals and and, and come together to help your clients much better what else so uh, of course in here you also have something that we like to call the community right the community that you serve you know as a team you can serve that community way better way stronger than a solo agent you know, as a solo agent you're going to be busy with a lot of things again you're only alone and that means that you have to take care of that full process but if you are a team of course you can divide the works a little bit you can have listing agents you can have buyers agents you can have people that take care of the admin stuff you can have people that take care of the marketing stuff all together as a team that structure can leverage Average way more and stronger in that community if you already look at the top three right you can see that that is the same for any other company and of course that is the power of teamwork right that as you come together and leverage on each other's strength you simply bring more value into the marketplace right now let's go to one more pro the mentorship that you get you know the mentorship you need to have good mentorship now this is always dependent of course on the leader that you have right but mentorship is not only found in the specific team leader or even the agency owner this can be mentorship from agent to agent right so because usually some agents are more experienced than other agents so you can leverage on their skills you can leverage on their experience you can leverage on many many things to make sure that you penetrate in that market very very well it's kind of like a net right that every time you do stuff you can go back to the team and reassess and see if you're doing the right thing at the right time so again mentorship is very strong in good teams what definitely will give you a very very empowered structure to grow in your market let's see what is a little bit of a con to a team structure first of them many times what you will see in teams because teams have different ways of how they strategize and structure their team but what i see a lot of times these days is that you have the so-called double split let me just write it down the double split many times you have like in an agency you have the normal company split that every agent enjoys right based on the uh, commission structure but usually when people go into a team there will be a another split based on that structure that the team is holding right that can be that you need to pay a split for the listings or the leads that you're getting or for certain uh, access to a database it can be many many ways but in that case you will see that the double split usually affects your commission so team structures it doesn't mean that you make less money because we always have to look at the absolute number but usually you pay a little bit more in a good team structure for your split to get access to a lot of tools uh, database leads listings within that team structure and we will go through those team structures a little bit later but remember it doesn't mean that a double split is negative for you you always have to look in what is the absolute number because the one thing that I always learned in school is everything times zero will always be zero so it means that if you can leverage on the team and that simply gives you more deals means more commission what is the absolute number that you make at the end of the year even though that you have that double split so you have to look at does that make sense for you don't only look at the percentage do the percentage times the amount of deals that you can make for that year and do you get a higher absolute number at the end of the year to make sense of that double commission that double split that you're paying what other small cons could you see in a team structure versus a solo one of the things is of course you are very dependent on the leadership right so leadership is a good thing so you're wondering why do i put it at the con because many times you have to look at what is the benefit of the leader what is what is it in for the leader a lot of agents become leaders but they actually just still agents 
by the hierarchy of many agencies people become leaders automatically and they start teams automatically they start teams without them actually wanting to start teams and if you join them are they actually a real leader right are they actually there in the business to help you grow or are they in the business of themselves so it's always important when you look at a team leader structure are you joining the right leader are you joining a leader that actually wants to be a leader are you joining a leader that has the knowledge the experience and most of all has the interest in building you as a professional agent and this is something very important and why did i put this on the con side because too many times when i look into the market i see leaders that don't want to be leaders i see leaders that forcefully or accidentally became a leader because of the whole hierarchy chain of many agencies so always have good conversations with these leaders ask them hey is this actually what i really want and how i want to do it and most of all is this the leader that can really help me grow in my business so pay attention to that leader okay another con that i want to mention in this case for your business is of course um the market right is the market ready for a team or is the market too small and is it better to be solo right in many markets right some markets are just not ready to have teams because the markets are very small uh, they have enough at just one person right and so if you have to come in with a team then the split or maybe even the market is not big enough to split the business in too many team members right so too many times what we see is that some uh, teams go into an area that is too small and then of course nobody wins at that moment right so it's very market dependent if this is ready for a team and sometimes you know what i see is that many teams just keep recruiting more and more and more but they actually don't have the products or they have the inventory to sell to have the opportunity to sell for all those team members so that is a very important thing that you need to know as an agent right is the market ready for a team right is the market open and big enough to come in as a team and of course you can always expand markets you can always go to the next door and grab another market in there but always the question is does the market next door bring the same opportunities as this market right so it's very market dependent if teams can be done in that specific area and if not then sometimes it's better to start solo and once you get busier 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 then only you expand into a team structure so that's very important for you to know now well, let me give you one final con that i feel is very very important to understand from a team to a solo structure right that is what i like to call the team appetite right the team appetite what is the appetite of the team how hungry is this team right how much does this team really want to work together because some teams call themselves teams but they don't really do the team work right so don't just look at every team as the same some teams are very different from other teams right how is the team basically strategized how is the structure of the team right is when you join the team are you still on your own and kind of part of a team or is it really you join a team and you can leverage on the team so what is the appetite of this team and at the same time also what is the attitude of the team do they welcome you or the moment you come in they kind of look at you like hey who is this new guy is this my new competition very important for you to understand right so again teams are not all equal right you have to look at the leader do you have an inspired leader do you have a strong leader somebody that is going to help you educate you empower you mentor you to grow or uh, and what about the rest of the team right do they have the right appetite do they have the right attitude do they welcome you in the family or do they see you as a big competitor coming to the family so it's very important for you to know and that brings me actually to the next point right we want to look a little bit what are the trends of the recent years of the type of team structures that we see you know what kind of teams do we see out there and it's very interesting to see that this is kind of changing right now over the last couple of years what we see here at prop coach right is a lot of teams are kind of look going into specialty areas in how they want to uh, position their teams right so let me give you three examples that we i see as trends right now in the type of teams that we see out there the first one let me just put it here in the box is the mentor mentee team is the mentor mentee team right this is actually one that has been around for quite a while right it's basically that there is an agent who is growing has decided to start a team and basically as a coach or as a mentor is adding people to their team and kind of guiding them in how they can grow their business the thing is 
And this is important for you to know, right? Many of these structures don't allow for a leader to really make way more money than they would just do business as an agent. Let me say that again. Many times the, the, the whole chain of, uh, of, of commission, basically how the commission is divided, for a mentor-mentee structure, for a leader to make a lot of money there, they either have to recruit a lot of people that are very productive, or they still would need to do some commission or real estate or uh, selling business on the side. So there will be like an agent and a leader at the same time. Now you must be asking yourself, is that possible? Is that scalable? Because we all know how busy we already are with selling and serving our clients. If you have to serve your clients, sell property, and you have to lead a team, how busy are you really going to be? And that's a question that I've been asking myself already for many years. Is that a scalable, sustainable business model for people to do in real estate? That they sell real estate and are leaders at the same time? Because I always learned what you focus on expands. So which one are you really focused on, right? So I see two other team structures that are coming up and doing very well. Let me explain them to you. The other one is, the listing, the listing team structure. So the listing team structure is very interesting, right? This is basically where a leader has already been very experienced in a certain area. They collect a lot of data, they collect a lot of inventory in the area, and then they just simply get too busy. So they need help with selling the properties in that specific area to keep building market share. So what they basically do, they centralize all the listings within their own, let's say their own little MLS system. And then they add more team members that are allowed to also sell the same listings. So you basically get a little bit of a listing uh, agent and a buyer agent structure. What in many countries is a very normal way of doing business, but some countries are still very new to this because the agent is still serving both sides. But these structures are very leveraged because you are able within a geographical target area to build stronger market share. You can sometimes go up to 40 to 60 to sometimes 70% market share if your team is very dominant in that area because you are very good in getting listings and then all the agents get access to those listings within the team to sell those listings to their clients. So a very great team structure. Again, you have to look at the double split. Is it attractive for you enough? Does it give you the absolute number at the end, but it's a very highly leveraged model that helps a lot of people that join the real estate, you know, get up and running quite fast, right? Because when you join the real estate, you don't have listings. When you join the real estate, you don't have inventory, but if there's a team structure that provides the listings, you are able to sell something from day one. Great, great strategy. Let's go to the third strategy. The third strategy is, let me get my red pen here, is the lead team structure. The lead team structure. The lead team structure, and you already see it, right, is all about leads, right? This is where a team provides a lot of leads to their team, right? So this is almost like a digital agency transformed into a real estate team. This is where the leader emphasizes and builds a lot of leverage in helping all the agents get a lot of leads. And this is more from the buyer side, of course, right? So this works very well for project sales teams. And this also helps actually also on the sub sales teams if people are looking for more leads. One of the struggles that we see a lot that agents have is doing their own marketing. They know how to sell real estate. They know how to serve clients, but where to get the leads. And now that digital marketing is becoming a more and more important part of our business, the question is of course, okay, do I need to learn every single tool or do I just simply join a team that can provide me these leads? I would have to again pay a little bit of a double split, right? I will have to pay for the leads or I have to pay a piece of my commission back to the team for them providing me the leads. But eventually I can leverage on that. I don't have to understand everything about this digital marketing process and they help me basically get leads every single day. Also something very upcoming, a lot of leaders investing a lot of money and time into that to basically build those marketing departments to provide those leads to their agents. And for some, it's a very, very big success model. Again, something that you have to consider, think about very carefully. If you as a leader want to do that, you have to kind of play with the numbers in what makes sense for you. And if you want to join one of these teams, if you're an agent, think, hey, this is very leveraged for me. Always read very carefully. Okay, what does that mean for the split of the commission? Does that benefit me? Is that useful for me?
So here you have it. This is everything that I wanted to explain to you about team structure versus solo. Now again, is this the right thing for you? Is this the wrong thing for you? Uh, you really have to look at the pros and cons and basically also at the team structures in if this makes sense for you. But if you have any questions for Prop Coach or you want to have more information about how teams really work or what could be a best fit for you, just reach out to us and we will be super happy to answer all of your questions. Hey, if you really like this video, do me a huge favor. Just leave a comment in the comment box below and we'll be super happy to reply to that. For now, this was a great session again here at Prop Coach. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.